Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about Kafka and how we can use it in our .NET application. Kafka is using for event streaming and is a very good choice for those applications that is following event-driven architecture. Here, I'm going to show you a real-world scenario that you may have in your daily job, in your applications. So imagine that we have one API that is producing some events and then we have one console application that is responsible for consuming those events. In this video, I'm gonna run Kafka on Docker container. For running Kafka on your local, you need two Docker image. One is Zookeeper and another one is Kafka. Kafka is dependent on Zookeeper and actually Zookeeper is keeping some metadata for Kafka for handling partitions, for the topics, everything about those infrastructure. Kafka using Zookeeper for being updated with the other partitions. Kafka for removing these dependencies to the Zookeeper recently introduced Craft that is uh, using for keeping this metadata but still I think it's not production ready and in this video I'm going to still use the Zookeeper maybe after I can create another video using Kafka and Craft without using Zookeeper so for running Kafka and Zookeeper I have one Docker Compose that all you need is two images with this configuration first one is zookeeper we set container name as a zookeeper and then default port for zookeeper server is 2181 we need to set these environment variables first one is a zookeeper client port which is we are telling zookeeper that everyone that wants to connect to you should use this port and also this tick time is actually is a unit time. For example, when Zookeeper trying to set a session timeout or request timeout is using this tick time. For example, they are saying two times or two tick times as a session timeout, something like that. We are setting two seconds. This is in millisecond. And because we are using both Zookeeper and Kafka in the same network, because they are connecting together, we are going to create a network network called Kafka here and then for the Kafka itself we are using this in Docker image default port is 1992 for the Kafka and then again for the connect we are setting this environment variable zookeeper connect is zookeeper as a container name and then the port okay Kafka broker ID default is one we are setting it here one but offset topic replication factor we should set it to one because we are currently running on local if you have more than three cluster on server you need to set it more than one but locally this replication factor should be one because we have only one cluster here and also this advertise listeners we have multiple listeners for Kafka. The default one is plain text, which means when we are trying to connect to the Kafka, the event is not encrypted. So we are sending the plain text to Kafka and it will be stored as a plain text. But we have another listener type like SSL, TLS, you can use them. But here we just using this plain text and the local host and Kafka port right again the network is kafka we need to run both of them on the same network let me run this docker compose and then we can start coding here we can say docker compose up all is running let's go to the code and see what we have here we have one producer api and then one consumer as a console application right we have one API we want to call that API to just producing those events for us. I already created one service for producing that this uh, produce async is empty. We want to write all the code from the beginning from scratch and then you will know how easy it is for using the Kafka in our .NET application. For Kafka, I'm using this Nougat package, Confluent Kafka, the latest version. I think this is the most popular one if you want to use the Kafka in .NET application. This Confluent Kafka is actually the best choice, let me say like that, for using the Kafka in .NET application. So we need to set the configurations. Thanks, Copilot. Here is the producer config, which is coming from Confluent Kafka. 
our Kafka is running on localhost, right? This localhost port is 1992. So bootstrap servers for the Kafka, we need to set it on localhost 1992. We need to set another configuration here. By default, when we want to produce on a topic, if that topic is not exist on cluster or the partition on the Kafka, it will raise exception. That is, this topic is not exist. So we need to set if we want, depends on your logic for sure. But here we want to say if topic is not exist, please create one topic for us. OK, and then we have uh, lots of other configuration. You can play with them or read the document. But another important thing is acknowledge when you have multiple partitions. Usually when you produce one event, if you have three partitions, Kafka trying to replicate your events in all of other partitions as well. But here, as you can see in this enumeration, we have one leader and all. In case of having one leader and two followers, you can say to the Kafka, when I send an event to you, if the leader got that event, just return the response to me. I don't need to wait for other followers to just get that event here. But I think it's better to set it to all just for making sure everything is safe for your events. That's the configuration for our producer. So here we can create our producer, producer builder. This is the null is a keyword from the confluent using for the key. We have one key in events here in this video. I'm just talking about code in the .NET and how we can use it in easy way. If you have any question about how we can use in the Kafka or talking about more concepts about the Kafka or event sourcing just let me know leave a comment i think this event sourcing is a very good and nice topic to talk about it so here i'm just focusing on the dotnet part for how to use kafka to producing and consuming events so here we create producer again our lovely copilot is uh, suggesting me some code let me just accept that I'm producing the first one is topic actually next one is the message that we are trying to send and I'm going to use test topic and also we are using this hello Kafka as a value let me just put something here as a date time but now or better you can see now and then we just saying that the message is delivered and we can have delivery result that value also it's better to set the offset here because the offset is really important part of Kafka how it works how it handles events is based on this offset so we can say offset that we just published that event I think that's set for producing one event and also we can say producer that flush here. What is this method is doing is here I'm using the using a statement. It means when the code is done, the producer will be disposed. But flush async, even the confluent Kafka is saying is better to call before destroying the object because you are waiting and making sure all of your events that you just sent, you have to wait to deliver all of them. So as here is saying, wait until outstanding producer request and delivery report callback are completed so it's good practice to put this flush here as well this is our producer part so let's run the application and see if it's work or not here i'm just calling this producer nothing more and then produce these events let's call the api okay nice here i just send one message to the kafka hello world with offset zero always the offset in the kafka is a start from zero but it depends on the partitions as well so for example if you have two partitions in your cluster in the kafka is a start this both of them start from zero one two they are independent so each partition they have their own offset until you using some specific keys for the events right but here we are using the null as a key so all of the events independent from each other and for each partitions their own offsets right so let me call it again for api and just send another events 
Currently we have two events sent to the Kafka. Now it's the time for this consuming events. Okay, in the consumer, it's very simple. I have only one hosted service as a actually background job. If you don't know why I'm using background job here, not hosted service, I have another video. Please check it. It's really interesting. The gist here is I'm using the background service for not blocking .NET runtime because background service is running in the different thread actually. Okay, let's start with creating the configuration. Again, Copilot is helping me. Bootstrap is a local host 1992. Group ID, you can set it, but it's required. What is group ID and why we need to use it? Kafka is using this consumer groups actually to dispatching the events to those groups. If you don't use these groups, it will always send the same message to all of the consumers. For example, if we have two consumers and one event coming to the broker, that broker will dispatch events for both of those consumers. But when we are setting this group ID as the same value for those two consumers, actually it's using kind of like round robin, one for this consumer, another event for this consumer right so here we are using again group id as a test group another important configuration here auto offset reset it means we have earliest and then the latest one okay the latest one means no matter how many events you already sent to the kafka once this consumer start listening to the broker it will get the latest events it means if i connect here and then events after you produce or send those events i will get these events but for the earliest if i set it for example earliest if you remember here i already sent two message to the kafka so already we have two message to the topic right this earliest means please give me these two events as well so we need to create consumer, same signature, consumer builder, and then set config here. Again, this one is for, this is the, the ignore. It means you can get all of the events, no matter what keys of that events. So we want to just getting all of the events and then we can handle those events by ourselves. When you create the consumer, we can start subscribing, right? The point is how Kafka getting the event from the broker. It's using kind of long pooling approach for getting the events. So let me just show you how it works. We can set timestamp here, for example, five seconds. So how it works here, we just subscribe to this topic, right? But we need to always listening to the Kafka for getting new events. It's not only one time because these events is going to the Kafka in different times. So we need to always listening to the Kafka for getting those events. The timeout here is five seconds means I am waiting for consuming events for five seconds. If there is one event during this five second coming to me, I will get it and then parse it, use it, whatever. But in this five second, there is no event. Confluent Kafka will return control to the main thread. And then you can check here if the consumer is null, you can say just let's go for another round and then waiting for another five seconds to getting new events. We have one event here. We just log the value and also the offset. Okay. Let me run both of project at the same time. Okay. You can see here in consumer one, without producing anything, my consumer starts reading those two message. You can see here for hello Kafka offset zero and offset one, right? Which is we just send those events before running this consumer. Let's call one API. We can see delivered message, consume message here for the consumer and producer. It's really nice. You can see no delay here. Everything that you can say, 
send the events you can immediately produce and your consumer will get that event as well here is the point this is the real simple one for using the kafka in our application right and then if you have some different logic complex logic you can just this is the main idea of getting consuming events and then producing events that said, I think this is the very easy way for using Kafka in our .NET application. I want to just create more videos about event sourcing, about the Kafka itself. For example, we can create or using the Kafka admin as well. Uh, we have admin client, you can delete topics or groups or managing your partitions, everything leave a comment for me if you like this video just let me know or if you have another idea or how we can use kafka in that application or maybe you are using another nugget package as well that's it for now thank you very much for your time